Hi folks. When we want to accurately describe a circuit, we construct what we call our circuit diagram. This uses standard symbols to communicate the details of the circuit. We're going to talk about some of the main circuit elements today and then look at a couple examples. All right. The most basic element of a circuit diagram is a wire. This is just a, a line that connects more interesting elements of the circuit together. A wire is a conductor that allows some current to flow through it. A little more complicated than that is a switch. The switch contains this little piece here, which is kind of like a broken element of the wire. This is something that's supposed to be a little bit reminiscent of like the giant Frankenstein switches that go cha-chung, cha-chung, to open or disconnect or versus close or connect the switch. When it's closed or connected, then current is able to flow. When it's open, it can't flow. Next, we've got the resistor. The resistor has these little zigzag paths on it. And the zigzag pattern is supposed to make you think of like, you know, a difficult path to walk along. Uh, the zigzag path here represents the way that resistors slow down the charges and make it less easy for current to flow through the circuit. Our next element is what we call a cell. A cell has these two lines long one and a short one connected by wires. This goes back to chemistry, which you may remember from about this time last year, the redox reaction, where you have two different metals, for example, copper and zinc, and you connect them into these cells and you get an anode and a cathode. We're not going to go into the detail of, details of those. Basically what we've got is two different metals and they produce a voltage difference between them. This allows you to do things like a little potato clocks and things like that where you connect a copper wire and a zinc nail into a potato and you can then light up a light bulb. In our cell diagram the longer of the two lines is the one that has the high voltage and the shorter line has the lower voltage. We call it positive and negative. A more complicated version of this is what we call a battery. A battery is basically a collection of cells. and We've got two pictures of this down here. One is a collection of three different little lemon batteries, lemon cells, that are connected together. They've again got the copper and the zinc. and They're all connected together, and between them, they power this little LED. If you were to take a 9-volt battery and you were to rip off the outer casing, you might find something like is shown here. Basically, inside of that 9-volt batteries rectangle. There are six littler batteries. These are actually called quadruple A batteries that are all packed together to produce the 9 volt battery. The symbol for the battery is basically the same as the symbol for a cell, or well several cells lined up one after another. Again, the longer end is the positive end of the battery and the shorter end is the low the negative end of the battery, the lower potential. Let's look at an example. Here's a very simple circuit. We've got a 12 volt battery connected to a 60 ohm resistor. The first thing we can, or that we should do when we look at this circuit is see if there's a complete loop. It looks like there's a complete loop going from the, from the battery around through the resistor and back to the other end of the battery. This means that the current will flow. We can figure out which way the current will flow by realizing that the long line of the battery is the positive side and the short line is the negative side current, which means the flow of positive charges, comes out of the positive side of the battery and it goes around like this. So there will be a current that flows around the loop like this. It's important to note that the current goes all the way around the loop. It doesn't get used up when it hits the, hits the resistor. And uh, if you didn't have a complete loop, nothing would flow. All right, now, how much current do we actually have flowing through this circuit? Well, we have our formula, V equals IR, which we can rearrange to I equals V over R. We then plug in our V is 12 volts, and our resistance is 60 ohms. We div divide, and we get 0.2 amps. This means that 0.2 amps is flowing around in this loop. 0.2 amps comes out of the battery, 
0 0.2 amps goes around here. 0 0.2 amps goes through the resistor and comes out the other side. And it goes all the way back around to the negative pole of the battery. All right. So now let's look at another example. This one's a little bit more complicated. These are not very complicated at this point. There's a 120 volt battery connected to a 20 ohm resistor and a switch. Now, this switch, if it's open or disconnected, no current will flow. But if it's closed, which means that the metal end's connected to the other metal end, then you have a complete loop and current will flow. Now, we're going to analyze this assuming that the switch is closed. If the switch is closed and we have a complete loop, then we look at this and we see that the long end is over here. That's the positive terminal of the battery, and this is the negative. So the current is going to flow from the positive, like this, all the way around, like this, to the negative terminal. All right. How much current is going to flow? Just like in the previous example, we have I equals V over R. We have 120 volts over 20 ohms. That tells us 6 amps flows in this particular circuit. And that means 6 amps flows out of the battery, goes around here. 6 amps goes through the resistor and comes out the other side, goes up around here goes around here. 